Today, we're gonna to be working on the Holy Grail, a McLaren F1 with a high downforce kit. Now that we finished with this side of the car, this rear wheel well, we still need to take one of these panels off to get into the side of the engine. So we'll do that next. We also want to remove the engine floor, which is also acts as a diffuser. What I'm gonna do is bring in Kevin Hines. He's our uh, McLaren F1 technician, the only one here in North America. There are only two people that work on these cars worldwide. One is in Woking, Penny Source, and of course we've got Kevin here in the States. So Kevin is going to oblige us and take this panel off and then uh, we'll get in there and clean up some more and should have a good time. All right, let's do it. So we're moving along on the F1. We're going to start uh, on the back end of the car. What I've done now is to remove the grill and the lower grill as well. This gives us access to inside and around the exhaust system, which as you can see is totally exposed at this point. Up here we have heat shields and there's a secondary heat shield on the inside that we'll probably remove to clean. This exhaust system we were talking about a little bit earlier, it's just, this is the sport exhaust. Most of it is Inconel stainless steel and some titanium. And uh, so it's gonna be really tricky to get it right. It's not something that we want to remove this beautiful heat staining. We wanna retain all that. Personally, I like it, I want it on there. And it's more of a personal preference than anything else. It looks cool as hell. And that's why we want it. So as we move up to here, we'll be inside. There, there is gold foil on both sides. The upper brake ducts here, these are really interesting too because they have a very sharp chevron pattern on the back of them that they were custom and handmade just for that specific purpose. Beautiful art, you know, craftsmanship by McLaren. You'll see that those as they come down are completely covered in gold foil for heat protection. One of the other things that we'll do is we'll clean behind these taillights because this is a big thing on F1s. Anyone who's actually cleaned one of these cars may know this, but these are suspended from behind. And a lot of times they collect a lot of dirt. I like taking the lenses off and polishing them and also polishing the stainless steel screws. Okay, it sounds really stupid, right? We're polishing screws on the outside of a car. Makes a huge difference in the definition of those taillights. So you'll see at the end how they're going to pop. They're gonna look really, really sharp, especially against the white car. From there, uh, we're gonna move into the engine compartment. Up here on the left-hand side, there's, an, there's a, a tank, an expansion tank, and it has blue anodized lines going into it with air equipped line. We'll go in there with an airbrush and touch up where the tool marks were. So it's, they're completely clean and they have a nice consistent blue finish and it doesn't look like anybody has touched them. So that's about where we're headed with it for now. And then uh, from there, we'll bring the car down a little bit and then we're gonna take you inside the engine compartment of the F1. Now that we've completed the dry ice blasting of the bottom of the engine, just a couple of quick things I wanted to go over. Now, one of the things about dry ice blasting is it doesn't really remove uh, oil. Luckily, we're working on a relatively clean McLaren F1, but there are still some pockets here of oil or grease that need to be addressed. Even after just regular dry icing, I like to go over with a towel and, and just wipe down any areas that are a little too wet or damp and just touch it up, basically. So I have a little bit of degreaser on this towel. I'm gonna go over some of this stuff that's a little funky. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what we're actually looking at here because there's a lot going on under this car. All right, let's come over here. I hope you guys can get a good shot of this. So these are the oil lines that drive the bottom of the sump. And these funny little purple clamps are called Wiggins clamps by their brand name. What's interesting is that these are two flanged 
two flange pipes that come together. And this has a clamp and a seal inside. And these, when you pull these two tabs down, it's a quick release fitting and they open up. So it makes the oil lines very easy to replace or, or exchange when you're changing out the engine. Used in Formula One, used in most race cars in the period. Uh, Wiggins clamps, I think they're still used today, in fact, because uh, they're still one of the most efficient ways of coupling two pieces of pipe that carry oil or coolant or whatever. Uh, but most importantly, that they seal really well and that they're quick release, you can take this apart in a big hurry. One of the things I've found too, this is the bottom of the motor right here that we're wiping. Uh, it does have some peeling paint on it, so I'm not, I didn't really hit it too hard with the dry ice. You have to be very careful as to what you do with that. I mean, we're running, we're only running about 80, 85 PSI through it, but still enough to, to do some damage or peel paint that's already starting to peel. So I'm trying to keep, preserve as much of the original as possible. And again, this is, this is an insulating panel. There are two of them here and here. These insulating panels are, are made of, uh, they look like asbestos, but they're not asbestos, obviously. Maybe it's a gypsum or something like that, whatever they are, but they're, they're very coarse and they have a, an, a foil backing on them, but they're also staying, these are original to the car, and they really don't clean up very well with dry ice. So we'll probably go in maybe a little bit later and, and touch this up and just take some of the, the heavy oil out, but for the most part, this is about as good as we're going to get for that. Luckily, everything that everyone's looking at right now is under a cover, the actual rear engine cover or floor as they call it, and it incorporates the rear diffuser. So all this is going to be covered regardless, but uh, it's always a good idea to do this kind of uh, maintenance, I guess you'd call it, to the car, whether it's dry ice blast or pressure wash or even uh, steam clean the engine and look for potential marks, especially after doing tours for uh, Colorado Grand or any of these you know, heavy thousand mile plus tours. You wanna make sure that, that everything's taken care of. One of the things we had to do before we started blasting was I wrapped anything that was covered in gold foil that was within the, the shot of the wand. So we just taped these off with a little gaffer tape. So these two ducts here, and then the front of the firewall was also wrapped. This is original gold foil here. These have been replaced, but I'm not gonna be the guy that blew it off of the parts, okay? So if uh, I wanna keep that intact, I don't know what dry ice has, what kind of effect it has on gold foil because very few cars I've worked on have gold foil and I've used the dry ice system. So better to err on the side of caution. We wrapped everything up to protect it. I can now clean the gold foil in a, in a normal way that I use and uh, we can move on. We're going to start here in the heat shield. This heat shield is going to stay in place though because it's very difficult to take out of the car. There's just a, number, a lot of hardware involved, a lot of aggravation. So I've got a uh, essentially a metal detailer, these stainless, it's a stainless panel that I'm working on. And there's all kinds of stainless cleaners and things like that. What I find is I use one that's uh, for industrial use. It's made for cleaning range hoods and things like that in, in restaurant situations, where they have to deal with stainless all day. So if anyone's got a, a really great way of cleaning stainless, it's gonna be those guys who have to do it all the time. So, with that in mind, it's basically sprayed onto this little towel. You can see all the funk that's come off of here already. And then we're gonna keep going. What this does too, not only does it clean, but it also has a little polish in it. So we'll get right to that. We'll try to get some of these water spots out of here. And notice I'm not using a metal polish because there's no reason to do that in this situation. All right, I should get that clean. Now we're gonna move on to the back of the mufflers because we have access to them here. Again, it's a little tight, but uh, I'll do one at a time so we can get in here. The heat staining in particular adds so much character to these mufflers, I don't want to change a thing. These are the sport mufflers. These were installed about 2007. And in McLaren F1 years, it's probably still not a lot of miles, but they are showing signs of a little bit of corrosion here and there, just from all those various heat cycles. And again, I don't want to take off any of that heat staining that turns them blue and, and brown and stuff, because it really adds to the character of the, uh, of the pipe. And it looks fantastic against all the gold. So for aesthetic reasons, more than anything else, we're going to leave it there.
my world. I do a lot of seminars, I do a lot of talks for car clubs, and they all want to know what kind of products I use. And I always tell them the same thing. Look, I don't have any secrets. I'll give you, divulge any kind of information you want. I'll let you know every method that I do, except one. This is how you clean the gold. This is a brand new towel, and this is after wiping the gold down. And no, I'm not telling you. We're going to start taking the taillights apart. Basically what we're going to do here is just remove the lenses on these. I'm not going to take the, the taillight off the housing itself. The housings are attached by a number of screws and it's a, a pretty long process and I do have, we, we do have access to the back of them and across the back and actually we'll have more access once the lenses are removed. So what we'll end up doing eventually is to clean, uh, we'll clean the inside reflector, we'll clean the lens inside and out be surprised how dirty these lenses get on most cars, especially carbureted cars, because of all the exhaust gases that swirl back here. And uh, it will make them look a lot different once they go back in. We will also polish these screws because that's, they're a little funky. So we'll clean those up as well. And while we're here, we'll clean the bulbs. These reflectors are plastic and they're textured, so you can get away with using a quick detailer on them. But if I were doing most other cars, they're actually smooth and a lot shinier. Sometimes they're chrome, sometimes they're silvered. Um, if they are silvered, there's a whole different process to do this. We're using mostly glass cleaners and things like that to clean it. So you have to be very careful not to take the silvering off. Silvering, to describe what that means, is very much how they would make a mirror. There's actually a silver film, literal silver film, that's applied to the back of the glass, and that's what makes a mirror. Okay, we've uh, cleaned this area up pretty well, and uh, let's go over to the bench now, and we'll clean up the lenses themselves. Okay, let's get started on the lenses and cleaning them. First thing we'll do is we'll take these screws out. To start, we're going to use our degreaser that I like to use. Again, this was made originally for range hoods. You can probably see in here how filthy this lens was at one time, or was now. Spray liberally. What this will do first is to remove any of that fuel film that's left over from the exhaust. The exhaust, surprisingly, when it's, especially at idle, will develop a lot of uh, sort of a blackish gray soot on here. So we'll take that off first. And once we have it clean, take one of our swabs. stuff's very foamy, so it's, I basically force it back into the swab itself so we can get in here. All right, that's going to leave, see all the dirt that we get out of there, like that. And then we're going to take our polish. This is a polish that we use, that I use, that's made for, um, it was originally made for visors on your helmet. So it works really great on clear plastic, on all the colored plastic. But a couple of things we're gonna do first, we're gonna spray it, leave it on, and don't touch it. Uh, what I find is if you let it sit for a couple of minutes before removing it, it definitely has a better uh, polishing ability. The other thing is, if you've got any uh, wax that's left in these letters, I find that when it's when it you spray this first, it releases that wax a lot easier. And this did have a couple of little spots that were bothering me, so I want to make sure we get them all out. So while it's still in spray, 
and we still have this coating on here, we'll just touch it lightly with our brush. Here we go, we'll just take a, another dry microfiber towel and work our way around the lens. So polish the inside first, making sure you get all the corners. And there you have it. Now let's do the other one. This is always one of the most neglected things about detailing in cars, especially British cars where you've got carburation and stuff like that, where the, um, you do develop a lot of soot on these taillights. But surprisingly, even though if they have gaskets and stuff, they still get, you still get the soot on the inside. Clean these up. The bamboo stick's still the greatest tool ever. So it's these little details like this that really make the uh, taillights pop. You've got nice shiny screws, they're, they're stainless, so they polished up quickly, they're gonna stay this way for a little while, and they'll look really great when they're back in the car. With the screws polished to this level, you can really see the contrast between the silver screw and the orange lens or the red lens, and you'll see when we reinstall them in the car, they're really gonna pop. All right, so we're moving on to the top of the exhaust system, actually the top of the engine compartment here, the back section. We removed the wing, thanks to Kevin. And uh, we'll just go over the, the cans nicely, the mufflers will go through here, across the, uh, the anodized piece, the, the bridge here. And then finally, we'll wrap up by doing the, taking the water spots off of the gold. So let's get started. This, this is basically uh, the same metal detailer we used underneath on the heat shield. And uh, we'll go through the heat shield again and then work our way into the top of the exhaust. This stuff works really well too because it doesn't leave a residue. And I'm always afraid that, you know, if you put something on these pipes that may stay on there, once it goes through a heat cycle, they may be on there permanently. So I try to use products that come right off and come off cleanly so we don't have any issues of it being permanently burned onto the surface. The screens themselves are anodized black, so they take actually a different finish and you can use the metal detailer on them, but they're not painted. So if you get a chip in one, it makes a very difficult thing to uh, repair. What I've been able to do is I've got a special formulated bit of lacquer paint that I can use for touch up. They actually fade to sort of a dark blue color and it matches it pretty closely. And no, you cannot use a Sharpie. Okay, we've got the, that pretty well set. Let me get the uh, prep the material to do the gold and we should be good to go. Okay, so what we're doing here is just repairing the blue fittings. And the best way to do that is this is actual touch-up paint. Even though these are anodized, uh, this replicates that anodized finish as best as we can without taking them apart and redoing them. So, plus we have the advantage of doing them in place. Now we're gonna come down here. This one is a little bit more worn. So the actual blue is, uh, has worn off quite a bit. So I'm gonna open this up a little bit, get a little bit bigger spray pattern. Just gonna touch up this last fitting on top of the transmission. And this one's faded pretty well, so 
I'll try to bring it back to its original blue color. Thank you for joining us on this journey around our McLaren F1. I hope that you learned something or maybe uh, picked up some good tips, but most importantly, you had an opportunity to see things you've never seen before regarding not just this car, but the car world in general. I want to thank a couple of people before we finish up. The people at RDS Automotive in Philadelphia and the McLaren F1 Service Center, and especially Matt Gramling and Kevin Hines, who provided plenty of technical assistance for us this weekend. So I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, there's car washing, there's detailing, and then there's beyond the details.